Hey everyone, Doug A798 here. I am here to salute what I consider one of the most underrated media franchises ever, and that's He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I got the idea to do this video from ranters, reviewers, and YouTubers such as Ben the One and Only, Doc Knock 99, The Wrestling Jesus YT, and uh, Rizio Taito Sh Shiri, my good um friend. I got the idea from these guys to do other videos besides reviews and rants. Okay, for those of you who don't know, He-Man started his life in the early 80s as an action figure, action figure toy line, action figure toy line. Then it became then then that toy line spawned a short-lived comic book series, an animated series, two more animated series, some more comics, another toy line in 2002, another toy line in 2009. And most recently, a newer type of comic book released, released and rebooted by DC. Um, for those of you who also don't know, He Man is about a He Man is about a muscular warrior in underwear with a giant sword from the planet Eternia, and him along with the Masters of the Universe, who you can see right next to him right now. In the front, you see He Man. Then to the right of him, you see Man at Arms, the only Man at Arms, Tila, and you see the sorcerers right here. There are other masters of the universe who aid him in his quest, but mostly it's just He Man. And he defends he defends Eternia and the secrets of Castle Grayskull and the sorceress from the evil forces of Skeletor, who you see right to the left of him right now. You see Skeletor, Evil Lynn right here, a sorceress. Then to the um right of evil Lynn, then to the left of evil Lynn, you see um beast man there are other henchmen like trap jaw but i'll get i'll get more to the other henchmen and the other masters of the universe later thing is no matter which version he man no matter which version of he man it is it's he man defending the secrets of castle gray skull and eternia from the evil forces of skeletor in most versions particularly the cartoons he man takes all takes he man is a young prince named is a young prince and a human named Adam when he takes when he takes um his sword and says by the power of gray skull Adam transforms into he man the most powerful man in the universe in the universe only un unknowns to everyone the only people who know his secret are man at arms Orko and the sorceress. Orko is the guy you see in the top, in the top right, in the top um right corner, and down here is where the sorceress um is. Okay, um, I got my start. I started watching He Man. I got into the He Man franchise in 2002 with the reboot, which aired on Cartoon Network's Toonami and Cartoon Network's Saturday Night Entertainment Block, which was their which was their second Saturday action anime cartoon um block. Um it ran from August 13, 2002 to um August 10th to I mean to January 10th, 2004, and it was sad to say canceled due to low ratings, which um I think sucked cuz this show the show was awesome. But I'm going to talk more about that later. The the show I'm about to talk about right now is the very, very first animated series, which was created by Lou Scheimer and financed by Filmation, an anim a, a cartoon animation studio. Um, I, s I first heard about this He-Man, the original He-Man cartoon show, which is the most popular in, in 2005, and I saw it for the first time in 2007 when YouTube was rising, um, in popularity um and i recently watched several more episodes here on youtube and i think this show this show is awesome despite the limited animation which this show is infamous for um this show is always funny because of that limited animation and the character expressions and the characters just saying random things like in one episode he man he man said we have to go we have to go to Man of Faces ship. Okay, he said ship in the cartoon, but from the untrained ear, he sounded like he said shit, and it was just funny. Um, 
th- there's lots of action. This was the show that actually broke the punching, the, st- the, the, the censorship that played cartoon, that played action cartoons in the 70s. And but most of the time, but he, but he man still can't use his sword. He most of the time just punched and threw people, used wrestling moves and punches. And I also love the morals. I usually hate it when they put morals in cartoons, but this show does it without being hypocritical or annoying. He man in the show is portrayed as a role model and is portrayed as non, for the most part, is portrayed as non-violent, only resorting to violence when necessary. That would change in other versions of He-Man, but that's pretty much how He-Man uh, um, is. The villains, well, they're kind of to- the villains are awesome, despite the fact they're kind of um, toned down. I feel they do get more edgier and violent towards the um, end of season two, towards the end of season one, one and onward. They started to get a little bit more violent, and in my opinion, the show, despite being for kids, also starts to get more violent. He-Man goes on more dangerous adventures and humans and humans are um and humans and a lot of humans in the show are turned into um freakish animals and i consider that a fate almost as bad as death so um yeah um this this show right here was the most popular of the he-man um animated series had the longest and most profitable run of the three animated series that it that that were based on he-man and was the most profitable because the next thing we're going to talk about is the movie, which was not a box office success. And th- which came, this was Masters of the Universe. It starred Dolph Lundgren and Frank Langella. It starred Dolph Lundgren as He-Man and Frank Langella as Skeletor. Um, this movie really wasn't popular. This movie wasn't popular when it was originally released. It has a cult following now, but it, was, it wasn't popular when it, really, when it, when it originally released because it was very different. While being similar in some aspects of the cartoons and comics, it was very different from the um, cartoons. Due to budgetary concerns, the He-Man cartoon mostly took place on the planet of Eternia and for the most part stayed there unless He-Man went to some other world. But in this mo- in the movie, due to the fact they had a low budget, He-Man... He, the, 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 movie take, the movie starts out on Eternia and ends on Eternia, but the characters end up, the characters end up on Earth, and that upset a lot of fans. Despite the budgetary issues, despite the fact this movie is supposed to be a B-movie, I thought this movie was awesome. The, the writing is good, the script was, um, good, the script was good, Franklin Jella was awesome as Skeletor. He man, Dolph, Lund- Dolph Lundgren, not the best actor in the world, but he was awesome as He Man. He is perfect for this role, and he's an okay actor, and he's an action hero, and that's what this is—an action movie. The the um supporting cast was good. Um, the set designs of Eternia were good, and the set designs of New York were surprisingly also good too. Um. The action scenes, the action sequences were awesome. There was lots of violence. Since this was a motion picture, they weren't bound by the censorship of the cartoons. So um, He-Man and Skeletor were much more lethal in this. Um, were much more lethal in this movie than they were um in the cartoons. Um, the new characters, while they weren't, they sit well with fans. I thought they were awesome. Um, the costume design was good. The production, despite being a movie, everything was good. But sadly to say, like I said before, this movie wasn't well received by critics. A lot of them blasted it because it was too similar to Star Wars. And and they were just unfamiliar with the He-Man um, source material. And fans of the He-Man cartoon, I heard, didn't like this movie because it was very different from the source material. But I thought this was an awesome movie and one of the best action movies um, ever and I hope it's um rebooted sometime in the future with a much bigger budget and most of the characters from the show and closer to the source material of the show. Okay, um, after He Man, the original He Man animated series aired from 1983 to 1985. It finished in the series finished its run in 1985, but it continued airing in reruns up until 1990. So it aired from 1983 to 1990. In 1990, the company um Mato was still interested. That's the people who produced the action figures were still interested in another He-Man franchise, so they created 
they created um, a new He-Man show called The New Adventures of He-Man, which features He-Man completely redesigned. Instead of underwear, in this show he has long yellow, he has shorter, he has long yellow hair, and he wears blue pants, and he wears brown boots, and um, he goes, um, and in this show, him... He-Man is summoned to the future world of Primus to help defend it from some mutants led by a mutant named Frog, F named Flog. So now, so, but Skeletor follows him. So now He-Man leads a group of freedom fighters and villagers, and the villagers of Primus in a fight against Skeletor and Flog and the rest of the mutants. So, I've only seen ten episodes of this series. But from what I watch, it's awesome, and I can't wait to watch um some more. This this was an awesome show. Sucks um, well it lasted sixty five episodes, and according to um Wikipedia, the show, the show got to finish its run. Unlike the next show I'm about to talk about, this was an awesome show. The animation was good. It was better than the original. The voice acting was good. Scott McNeil was in this show, and Michael. And Gary Chalk, who would later voice He-Man in, in the next cartoon, was awesome as Prince Adam and He-Man in this cartoon. The action sequences were better. The animation was even the animation was even better than the 80s cartoon because they had a bigger budget. The fights, the action sequences were awesome. The show was funny. The 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 mutant Skeletor, the mutants and the and Skeletor and um and and um and um Skeletor's um. Freedom Fighter friends were pretty funny, and um, and yeah, the theme music's awesome. Everything. This was an awesome um cartoon, and I think it would be real cool if this cartoon and the original He-Man cartoon returned to the hub, since the hub appears to be showing a lot of retro um programming. I'm, I'm gonna talk about the hub um later. Um, the last. He-Man show, and this is the show that got me into the franchise, was the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe remake. This this was a total remake of the 80s cartoon, and sort of combined stuff from pretty much the whole entire um He-Man franchise. This show was awesome. The animation was superb. The action sequences, the action and violence was awesome. Um, the characters were awesome. They were awesome. They were relatable. They were relatable. They were awesome. They were relatable. They were funny. The show was always um funny, action packed, serious when it needed to be. Um, the um, like I said, the animation was good. The writing was awesome. The writing got to the writing was was way better than the writing in the eighty in the in the 80s cartoon and the early 90s cartoon they got to reach things that were never reached in those that can never be reached in those cartoons but sadly to say due to low ratings in season two with the snake man one of the most violent creatures to appear in this series this show then this show Due to the ratings concern, this show didn't last long. It was, like I said, it aired in August third. It aired. It first aired on. It premiered on August thirteenth, two thousand two, and aired all the way up until January tenth, two thousand four. This show didn't last long because this show didn't last long because it was played by back timing, and they also couldn't find a good time slot for it. This show premiered around the same time. This show premiered around 2002. That's when anime was hugely popular. And unless you were a Star Wars, a DC cartoon, a Marvel cartoon, or a Power or Power Rangers, you really weren't. Your cartoon really wasn't gonna last because there was just no, no. I mean, while cartoons, while Saturday morning and primetime cartoons were still popular, there was really no need for them anymore but and I think that sucks because this cartoon was awesome it deserved to it deserved to have a more profitable run like its 80s cartoon um did and I think it should, cartoon should have lasted longer on Cartoon Network and I think it needs to be brought back and I know this will never happen because this really happens but since it happened with Family Guy and Inuasha I hope this show not only comes back to Cartoon Network but gets renewed for a new gets renewed comes out of cancellation and gets renewed for a new season and the animators and writers finish season three okay i like okay